I do want to thank our sponsors tonight for um, hosting us. Um, the first people I would like to thank so much for is Hack Reactor for giving us the space. It was awesome. Very cool. Uh, I want to thank the, the guys at Meta. Um, uh, they make a headset that you can put on. It's for augmented reality. And um, not only did they donate a $1,000 headset um, to our loop that um, a gentleman by the name of Ty Tyler Lindell and I will be designing and developing, but they, um, they also bought some of the beverages that you, you were drinking tonight. I hope everybody got a beverage. If you didn't, there is boxed wine, and why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to thank my company, Space Time Insight, because um, my CEO, I just walked up, I'm like, please, can we have some money so we can buy some pizza so people think this is cool? And he was like, sure. <laughs> so so um, big thank you to them, and thank you to our loop. Um, I don't know if everybody would be in the room tonight. Um, maybe there'd be three-fourths, maybe there'd be half, but because you guys are here and you're doing this incredible thing, we're excited and we're here and we're behind you. and so. Thank you very much for making tonight what it was. Uh, yeah. All right, so um, we're going to get to augmented reality now. Um, I'm going to talk tonight about design. My background is user experience. Um, I do a lot of 2D prototyping for geospatial analytics. And in my spare time, I do this. And I like to design augmented reality. And I've done some contract work, and it, it's OK. I have a lot to learn. Um, I'm working in 3D modeling right now. I'm learning Unity 3D, and um, it's a blast. Uh, if you, by the way, if you guys can pull out your phones and, uh, or while you're ignoring what I'm talking about, just do a tweet real quick. Uh, we're at Hack Reactor, and it's a uh, hashtag uh, weird word, A-R-U-X. Um, so I, I want to be sure to mention. Um, the developer I'm working with. Um, I'm going to show you a demo tonight, and what you're going to see is 90% he wrote it. Uh, and you know, um, it's just a, a low fidelity prototype, so um, you'll want to judge it um, with a grain of salt because uh, it's a user experience lean methodology that I'm using. We showed our loop. This is what we can do, and they're like, "Whoa, cool! Now we're gonna now we're gonna make it look cool." But yeah, so uh, Tyler Lindell, um, he is a software engineer. And he's dabbling in artificial intelligence. Some of the stuff is on GitHub. Um, super ra ta talented, rad guy. So let me tell you what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I want to talk about the pain points of augmented reality. Um, if you are doing anything, we should probably care about pain points, whether it's like web apps or you want to build a, a shovel or anything. Um, you should think about the pain points that people are having uh, when you're building a product or else you're just a, a solution looking for a problem, which I hope is not what augmented reality is, because I sure love it. Um, so <laughs> I'm really instilling confidence, aren't I? Um, I want to talk to you about some problems then. I want to find some problems for people that we can solve. So I found this picture online. Um, this is the European Space Agency. And I think there's um, quite a few problems here now. These are the smartest people in the world. So um, they've designed some great things. But I'm trying to think far out into the future. Um, and so. I I see some issues with their workflow as a user experience designer. And the next slide will point out what some of those are. But actually, I want to engage you guys and, and like use your imaginations, really think outside the box, and tell me, like, what are some problems that you see in this situation for, for uh, somebody who's in a command center operating, like, spaceships? Keyboard confusion. Keyboard confusion. Ding, ding, ding. You get $100. You get $100. No, I always wanted to do that. Keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> he, nobody gets $100. Uh, yeah, I keep a keyboard confusion. Anybody else? Yeah. They have to divert their attention between the information they're looking at and what? Yeah, they have to divert their attention between here and here. Perfect. <coughs> Any, anybody else see anything? It, you can't be wrong. I'm not going to judge you if I, I'm wrong all the time. Yeah. Wicked hand cramp. Thank you. We have. I want to do a user interview with you later. <laughs> Thank you. What's your name? Chris Phil. Chris Phil. Thank you. Uh, oh yeah. This is a microphone that I can. Okay. I just want to throw this. I'm throwing this at you. What's your name? I'm Connor. All right. Throw it back. Here you go. <laughs> 
That's so so. I'm gonna ask more questions tonight. This is great. Wow, you guys are engineers. All right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, we got that. Uh, I found, hey, look at his back. Talk about like hand cramp. Look at his back. Like the, he, the reason he's hunching over is because these screens are recessed because of the keyboard confusion, and that's that's d uncomfortable. The third thing is, look at this. This is a 2D area right here that's withhold with holding information. What if there was more information in this screen? He 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 has to fit everything in here because it's bound by this monitor. So depth, I think, is an issue. And there's a phone here. <laughs> Why is there a phone? <laughs> I, you can just use your cell phone. But you know what? For, I, um, I just want to say the ESA, I mean, they're brilliant. They, they, I, I am not even one-tenth as smart as they, they are. And they're in the business of putting people in space, not fancy UX design. So I have a lot of respect for them. But I just wanted to point these things out. Um, and we could find more. So now that I've showed you the operations center, I want to show you a demo for like how I might fix this problem. How how Tyler and I um, envisioned it, and we uh, you know we contacted Meta, and we're like, hey, can you donate a thousand dollar headset? And they're like, yeah, why not? Uh, and then we called uh, our loop, and they're like, do you want a thousand dollar headset? And they're like, uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> so uh, let me play this thing here, and I, hopefully this demo will work. We all know how it is when you go to start something, and it doesn't. So this is going to be in Unity, um, uh, right in C Sharp, and then uh, I, I used Blender and uh, Photoshop to um, to do some d 3D modeling. But I'm going to be honest; I took the 3D models from uh, some guy named uh, like Tweet Tweet Pew Pew and other people from a website that I will I will put the name on here, so I'm giving them credit. But I I changed the actual designs, and then uh, the UI uh, I made myself. Um, like the, the cheesy hexagons. Okay, so um, the augmented reality, by the way, is you're registering uh, digital aspects in the physical world in your field of view. So th things that you can never see in reality, you know, you're going to see them uh, through AR. So let me press play again. Sorry, guys. Oh, oh it hadn't pressed play. That's why. Perfect. Okay, so we don't have the headset yet, so I had to build it on the iPhone here, um, which is okay, you know, well, it is what it is. But we actually made it happen, and that's really exciting. So there's three screens here. There's the screen over here, and that's uh, pod telematics. So you're going to have uh, uh, acceleration, velocity, pitch, and I don't know if you guys are using jerk or not. I don't know if you have jerks there. Probably not. Um, that was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a comedian. Uh, <laughs> Uh, then we have um, the uh, pressure, temperature, charging uh, UI here, and then uh, finally there's the uh, the you know the pitch and the yaw uh, and the gimbal, uh, so and also there's going to be like a console like updates here, um, so they can go back and forth and and look at these and and when we get the meta they'll be able to, they'll be able to move these things with their hands as well. So um, and the, and then the final thing is we, we actually did do an actuator here so you know as you're looking I mean uh, it's cheesy but yeah as you're looking you can actually rotate what you want to look at and this is our first stab at um, making some UI and y if you're in a VR AR you'll, you'll see some of these design patterns around so these aren't this is nothing that I, I actually invented um, although I wish I could take complete credit for it uh, okay so that's like kind of like what I'm thinking might be a, a solution to to the problem for somebody in the in the operator center uh, uh, as in the operation center. Um, and if you want to talk more about it, please uh, email me, tweet me, and we can like I'll just stay up late and we'll just talk about it because it's really exciting. But I have to stay on on point here. I have to keep attention. All right. So um, I told you tonight this talk was going about. Be about the cognition behind augmented reality. Uh, and so I want to dive into the brain a little bit. And there's a lot of things we could talk about. There's, you know, there's memory, there's uh, executive control, um, planning. Um, but I want to, I think attention is really important for somebody who is working in an enterprise situation. Uh, and so I want to explain to you what attention is and, and how it's going to impact the designs that you're going to code, that you're going to push pixels on, 
Uh, however, so this is a, a 3D model of um, the, the brain that I was telling you about, in case you hadn't fi haven't figured it out yet. Uh, and there's three parts of attention, okay? So attention really isn't just hey, your mom telling you, hey, pay attention, you learn how to pay attention, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to focus really hard. Um, it's actually comprised of three different regions in your brain, um, and these three different regions are responsible for, one, selecting, two, orienting, and three, alerting. So three separate regions respectively assigned to these three things. Uh, selecting means choosing among conflicting actions. So you're out, you see UI, like maybe there's like a bunch of UI in front of you and you have to select which one that is relevant to you. Uh, orienting is referring to a point of reference to sensory, sensory objects. So that's actually, uh, it's not sel it's not selecting. You're actually moving, you know, your your th your thoughts. You're moving your attention onto an object, um, and then finally, alerting. Alerting involves changes in the internal state and preparation for perceiving a stimulus. So something's actually happening in your brain. That's something happens. There's a stimulus like that, grabs your attention, and you're. So there has to be some physiological change in uh, the neuronal array in, in your brain. Uh, so I c wish I had time to talk about all three of these, but um, I, I don't. So I'll talk about the orienting one predominantly, but I wanted to show you a video um, that is kind of funny about attention or not paying attention. So this is a guy who's going to run into a window. Let's watch it. <laughs> uh, well, i got to press play first. Sorry. I am really smooth at these presentations. You know, he actually handed me a clicker earlier. Uh, there, this is all getting, all right, there we go. This is great. Ah, look at that. <laughs> this is makes me feel better about my life. <laughs> uh, um, so I'm gonna ask you guys a question and I get that box, this is gonna be great. All right, so why? <laughs> Why did he run? <laughs> why did he run in to uh, this is like a bad joke? Why did he run to the glass wall? Uh, do you think uh, he was having issues selecting? Do you think he was? Does that, does that make? S does that question make any sense, or is it just <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Um, well, well, we'll see here. If anybody it clicks for anybody, if not, I'll try to explain some more. If not, I'll move on in embarrassment. Uh, so the first one is. Uh, is he selecting? Um, is he having a problem selecting like his attention with what he needs to do? Like, is he is he having an issue orienting himself in space, or is it an, alert, an alerting thing? Like, you know, for instance, this door. Like, is it his fault he ran to the door, or did the people who designed it not alert him that there's a door here through some simple means? Um, I know it's a dumb question, but if they would do it right, then maybe he wouldn't run into the door. So, uh, what do you guys think? D not knock off your beer uh, there. What's your name? John. John. He wasn't paying attention, so alerting. Alerting. Very good. Okay. Uh, anyone else have an opinion? I'm not going to correct anybody here. I'm just, I just want to hear what you think. That's all. I, I would need the microphone. I would say <laughs> the foundational problem is number one, selecting. He looked up and said, I can go left or right. He didn't recognize that that was not a uh, transmissible area. He thought he could pass the computer side, and there, therefore he oriented himself and didn't bother. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, so you say it's alerting. There was th his mind wasn't alerting something. You say it's selecting. He wasn't uh, selecting what he needed to maybe to pay attention to. Um, anybody else? I can throw this thing really far. I can. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll we'll move on from that then. Um, you know my personal. My personal opinion on it, and you know, I'm not a neuroscientist. I have an undergraduate degree in cognitive science, but that means I, I just know how to read stuff and kind of put two and two together. Um, uh, so I think his attention was on time and it wasn't on space. Like he's looking at his phone. As a UX designer trying to read somebody mi somebody's mind, I think that he was, his mind was like on a, an appointment that he had to get to or something. And so um, he wasn't able to orient his attention um, I think I think uh, orienting was the issue, but it's 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 kind of relative. And some PhD could walk in here and tell me the real thing. But uh, so there's two there's two parts of orienting. Um, there's a cue, 
like, hey, I, I snapped my fingers or I, you know, I jumped really silly and you're like, whoa, that happened. Or there's a voluntary control where you're actually going to divert your attention somewhere. Um, so th those, are the, those are the two parts of orienting. And so we, we look at things that inter interest us and that relates our attention to uh, where we fixate. Um, I think that's, that's part of voluntary control. I think this guy decoupled his attention uh, from where he was looking at. He was attending some queue, maybe lunch, uh, other than the center of his gaze. His action of hitting the glass shows that he was sensitive to information occurring with respect to where he was putting his voluntary control. Um, and I think he was relatively slow um, to have information move across his phobia. So all the orienting happening, all orienting happens in the parietal uh, lobe. So there's four parts of your brain. There's uh, um, the frontal lobe. Uh, you have your visual cortex in the back, um, temporal lobe. And then uh, up here is uh, like kind of this area is uh, where parietal activations happen. I just think this stuff is interesting. Um, let's see here. OK, so let's get to the augmented reality and see how all the stuff that we're talking about actually applies to this. Um, so I put these purple dots here to draw, like to, to, to show a UI element that you might orient yourself to. Um, so this is, this is the UI that you saw in the, um, the Hyperloop demo. And I think with augmented reality, there's going to be a lot of things happening around you. And it's, it's going to be a complex tax to task to orient yourself. So I think that um, we need to create interaction models that are going to accommodate for that. It's going to take a little bit of artificial intelligence and machine learning to predict you and where you're going to look. Uh, so um, this is an interaction model that I think may work. Um, and I'll try to explain it to you. So let, you know the, all these UI elements, uh, a couple slides back, like you saw the map, you saw um, menus, so on and so forth. Well, let's say that they're represented here by, you know, here's one object, here's another object, and here's another object, and you've got your headset on, and you know as you move that, uh, that accelerometer, then uh, an object of interest is there, and I I'm suggesting it expand when you look at it. But you don't want everything expanding like right when you look at it, because then that would make you nauseous. Things would be blowing up everywhere, and it, that would not be good. But you could use... Uh, the in, uh, inverse law um, found in physics, uh, like for gravity, you know, as something moves closer to another object, it'll start to accelerate faster and faster. Um, and you can vary the rate of acceleration at which this uh, expands as a function of time this guy's looking at it. Uh, and and uh, conversely, shrink these. Um, and so this is a, an idea that I have. It might not be good, like Tyler and I might make it. I, on the Meta headset, and turn that turns out that it's not. But we can test it, and that's the that's the beauty of science is that we, we can, um, you know, do an experiment to see if it objectively works or not. Um, so it, this talks about designing for the attentional blink. Um, I think this video is pretty interesting, actually. This is going to uh, talk to you about how you can actually m miss. Uh, targets or UI elements that are happening in your vision. Um, so I'll let the video uh, explain how that works. Uh, pay attention. It's, it's kind of fun. Can everybody see it okay? <laughs> and then they're going to do some, some promotion for their company for making a really cool video, and I'm going to take it off of that. Um, sorry, guys. 
Who succeeded at catching both the targets? You did, Alex? You're like superhuman. I didn't even see one. <laughs> Just joking. Who, who else got both of them? Anybody? You got both of them? You got both of them? Very cool. Who got one? A lot of people here got one. Very cool. Uh, I, I mean, I, that's just an example of all the things there are that happen in human perception that when we leave designing in 2D space, we're going to have to account for. We're going to have to design and code for. So um, making augmented reality is going to be very complicated, and I'm glad there's a lot of smart people in this room who are, who are able um, to do it. So I'm done with that talk. I'm going to wrap up with you guys. Um, so here's the deal. This is the first augmented reality uh, hacker or hack AR. I don't, we should vote on how we say it. I don't even know. Um, but what, what it's going to be from now on is we're going to hack together. We're going to have speakers come for like 10, 15 minutes and present on something. And the rest of the time, we're going to be making things. Uh, so there's going to be uh, a prize. The first one's um, to be decided. We just got some funding, so we'll... Um, try to find something cool. If you guys have any ideas, email me or, or um, um, tweet me. Uh, it's somewhere probably in the $50 range. Um, I have to create the judging criteria for it, but that's what you can expect at, at, the, next, uh, at the next Hack Reactor. Um, after this, we're going to get some um, beer. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get any beer. Uh, it's probably good that I didn't. Um, <laughs> perhaps you think I, I did. I don't know. <laughs> or something, but I didn't. So anyways, uh, I think that's it. Uh, so I'd like, to, um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out, and I hope that you'll come to the next, uh, the next event. Did you have a question? Uh, 